Good evening. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, you can hear me. We can start. Fantastic. This is Dorothy from Egg Donation Friends. I'm the moderator today. Uh, welcome to the fourth webinar by Egg Donation Friends. Uh, the presentation will last about 40 minutes, and after that, there will be time for questions from the viewers. Uh, you can type your questions in the chat section while our presenter is speaking. Uh, the questions will be answered by our expert after the presentation. Uh, the webinar is being recorded, and you will be able to view the recording on our website. We will also publish a transcript with all the questions and answers. Uh, today's topic is IVF with donor eggs. Is it for me? Indications and good practices. Our presenter today is Dr. Maria Kutorskaya, IVF specialist from Gynam Fertility Clinic in the Czech Republic. Dr. Maria, good evening. Hi, hello. Hello, Dorothy. Hello. Hello. Um, are you ready to start? Yes, we can start. Fantastic. Okay, I will upload the presentation. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So, we can start, yeah? Yes, we can start, no problem. Okay, thank you. So, hello everybody again, uh, and thank you for joining this session. And uh, again, my name is Maria Kutrus, and I work as a gynecologist at Gyn and Fertility Clinic in Prague, in Czech Republic. And uh, today we are going to speak about the IVF with donor eggs, is it for me, indication and good practices. So, to answer uh, this question, is it for me, uh, first of all, of all, we should uh, uh, talk uh, about the indication. So, right. so I summarized for you uh, five groups of the indication. The first is low ovarian reserve. Uh, the second is genetic disorder from part of the woman. Uh, the third is the congenital absence of ovaries. Uh, then it's menopause. And the last is repeated IVF at failure. So, let's start uh, with... Dr. Maria, can I interrupt for a second? Uh, yes. Could you speak up a little bit or could you move a bit closer to the microphone? Uh, okay. Yes, sure. Uh, just now it's better? Oh, now it's much better. Thank you very much. Okay. Perfect. So, um, and um, yes, uh, in the first group is a low ovarian reserve. And um, what can bring us for this situation? So, the most uh, common factor is the age, age factor, age over 40. And then I will uh, back to this slide, but in regards of the age factor, I would like to show you this chart. Moment. Yeah. And um, in this chart, you can see uh, how drastically is decreased uh, the live birth rate and the pregnancy rate uh, with the age. Here you can see in the first two group, uh, when women less than 35 or uh, 35 up to 37 years old, the chances are, are good. And uh, in the last two groups, the chances are really uh, decreased. And the also important thing in this chart, uh, it's, uh, the, uh, it's also about the egg quality. As you can see, the first form here, uh, the first one, is show us the retrieval rate. So also in the last group, we can get the outside. But those eggs doesn't bring us to the healthy pregnancy and to, to the uh, live birth. So again, uh, the eggs, the number of eggs is important. That, but the main rule plays the quality of those eggs. So let's get to the, this slide again. And uh, what else can uh, bring us to low ovarian reserve is the 
agile patches premature wagon trailer. Uh, it can happen uh, for young women. Uh, this woman can be healthy with any with no uh, disease, with no surgery. Uh, we don't know still the reason why it happens sometimes. Um, maybe some genetic predisposition or some autoimmunological factor. Um, yes, but we need also this sometimes this situation. And the last is damage ovarian uh, issue, tissue due to the surgery. For example, some ovarian cysts or endometrioma or um, chemotherapy, radiotherapy due to cancer uh, can also affect the uh, egg uh, quality. So let's move to other indications. Uh, the second, these indications are not so common like the first one. Uh, so the second is genetic disorders on part of the woman. Uh, this is a situation when uh, the uh, egg of the woman uh, has some uh, genetic alteration, genetic mutation, and that can't bring us for uh, can't bring us for the healthy offspring. Um, I think the sound is still not clear. Already. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Maybe if you yeah. could uh, speak up a little bit more, a bit closer to yeah, the microphone. Let's hope it will be okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, then the third is the congenital absence of ovaries. Uh, it's, for example, the Turner syndrome. Uh, so then it's menopause, I think it's clear. And the last indication is repeated IV failure. Um, for me, it's the most difficult situation to decide uh, to proceed with the donor program because the couple can be healthy, can uh, can uh, we can get the material, the egg, but uh, the IVF uh, um, in the certain points fails. For example, fertilization fails, or implantation fails, or we have no good uh, embryo uh, after PGS. So that's why uh, when we try several times IVF and it doesn't work with all methods, so then we have to suggest also the uh, donor program. And uh, here I prepare for you the diagnostic parameters. And uh, first again, it's age over 40. Uh, then uh, low age level. Uh, what is the AMH? I think everybody knows, but I shortly tell you. Uh, it's an antimalarial hormone. Uh, this hormone produced by granulosa cells from uh, small antral and preantral uh, follicle. And the normal range, uh, we use the nanogram on mixture. In a reproductive age, it's around 1 up to 7 nanograms on milliliters. And, um, if uh, if it's uh, below one, so then it can be signed for the for a poor ovarian reserve. Then it's a high FSH level. FSH is follicular stimulating hormone, and it's a gonadotropin, and it's regulating follicle growth. So uh, when the the ovarian function is uh, uh, decrease, uh, FSH starts grow. So that's why it can be a sign for a um, low ovarian reserve as well. And then a low antral follicle count. Um, uh, antral follicle can be seen by ultrasound. It's a small follicle, two up to eight millimeters. And um, um, yeah, and if you, if you have few, just few follicles, uh, it can be uh, also a sign for poor uh, ovarian reserve. So when we have two or more uh, of these diagnostic parameters, it can be a sign of a really poor ovarian reserve. So as a diagnostic parameter, and then uh, let's take a look of the IVF successful factor. Again, uh, embryo quality. It's uh, uh, I think uh, it's 75 percent of for success IVF is on the part of embryo quality. Of course, other uh, points is also important. 
uh, endometrial receptivity, of course, we have to um, choose the right time for uh, perform the embryo transfer when the window of uh, the implantation are open. Uh, then, of course, absence of uh, anatomical abnormalities such as uh, fibroids or uh, uterine septum, absence of infection or some immunological issue, and absence of chronic disease. But again, the main factor is the, the good role in IVF success is the embryo quality. And let's shortly now discuss here is the donor. So usually a donor is a, a young woman uh, age uh, between 80 and 35 years old. Uh, in our clinic, we set the limit to 32, so they are even younger. Uh, they have good personal uh, and family medical history. All donors are undergone uh, blood test for uh, sexual transmitted disease, uh, for uh, uh, we check also hormonal level and um, check also some genetic disorders. Uh, they are smart and good looking and um, uh, and um, in our clinic uh, uh, they have at least uh, high school degrees. So uh, then let's move how to, here I prepare you shortly how does it work in uh, Czech Republic. In Czech Republic is voluntary and uh, uh, it's anonymous for both parties, for as well as for recipient. Um, it's not allowed for the same sex partners or for the single woman, and we have limitation of age for the recipient and two marks for 49 uh, years old. So, uh, as I mentioned, as is anonymous. Uh, we can provide you uh, this information. Uh, you, you can have uh, this information about the donor. Uh, of course, the physical characteristics such as eye color, hair color, high weight, uh, of course, the ethnic background, uh, blood group and resus factor, uh, the reproductive history of the donor, uh, education degrees, and hobbies. And, and so then, how does it work? Um, how does it work uh, uh, in Czech Republic? Uh, so first of all, you will fill an application. Uh, uh, you will fill the uh, application. Uh, put all your uh, physical characteristics, uh, such as uh, um, eyes and uh, hair color, so on. Uh, additional wishes about the education, of course, the blood group, the resus factor. Then, according to your um, uh, wishes, we will uh, um, for you the donor. Uh, we will contact the donor, and um, uh, and then we can, um, according to your wishes, uh, plan the timing when you are able to come to our clinic, and then. Uh, after the, um, we proceed with the uh, egg retrieval of your donor, uh, we, we, we start to prepare you for, for the end of transfer. So, um, here uh, you can see uh, where to go. Uh, it's the most uh, the famous uh, destination, of course, it's Spain. Uh, Czech Republic, Cyprus, Greece, Ukraine. Um, so, uh, these countries, in these countries, the ex donation is legal, and it also they have also good um, successful rate. So, and destination criteria: how to choose where where to go. I would consider uh, this uh, um, this point. Um, uh, first is the finest uh, 
of course, uh, as you can imagine, in Spain, maybe in Cyprus or in Greece, uh, the donor uh, more uh, like have more Mediterranean characteristics, like broad, um, uh, dark hair, maybe dark eye. And uh, for example, while in Czech Republic and uh, Ukraine, uh, the donor have like more Central or Eastern European characteristics. So for me, uh, you can consider this uh, point. Then of course, the treatment costs. Uh, in Czech Republic, it's approximately 4,800 euros. And of course, the successful rate. Uh, and in Czech Republic, uh, fresh uh, donor egg cycle, the successful rate is 61.8%. So here again, uh, the, uh, the important uh, uh, points again for successful um, uh, IVF. So of course, uh, of course, the embryo quality. And what uh, bring us to the good embryo? Of course, uh, good eggs and good sperm quality. Again, the most important point what can bring us to the healthy pregnancy, the embryo quality. So in case um, and then eggs quality are not good, uh, of we can proceed to egg donation program. In case we haven't good sperm quality, uh, we can try additional uh, laboratory methods uh, for sperm selection. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah. And um, uh, so how we can uh, select uh, the uh, the sperm? Uh, we have uh, different uh, different um, uh, methods, uh, such as the IMSI, for example. Uh, it's morphological selection. Uh, pig seeds, physiological selection, when we use the hyaluronic acid, which uh, bind the mature sperm. Uh, we have also the MAX uh, that remove apoptotic uh, spermatozoa, uh, and uh, this method is indicated with the high level of uh, DNA fragmentation, uh, and that we can test with the SCSI. Um, yes. And in case uh, we can't achieve the good embryo quality uh, due to bad eggs quality or due to bad sperm quality, then of course we have to proceed with the donor program. So um, then um, endometrium thickness, uh, of course, is important. Uh, we can perform the embryo transfer when the endometrial thickness is minimum seven millimeter. Uh, also, the hormonal support is important. Uh, it's really important uh, in uh, egg donation cycle because it's a uh, one hundred uh, uh, percent artificial cycle, and uh, uh, you have no uh, corpus luteum that secretes. Uh, um, uh, secret progesterone, so that's why the hormonal support is really important uh, in the donor's program. So then I put immunological factors uh, controversial. There are a lot of study with uh, really uh, different conclusion, and this conclusion are often um, controversial. So uh, it's still. Uh, not clear if it uh, really uh, play role on the IVF success rate. Uh, but uh, for example, in our clinic, um, we in our clinic we during the egg donation program uh, we used to give the small dose of prednisone, for example, and uh, but it's still not clear if it helps. Uh, of course, good general health condition. It will help not just for IVF 
but uh, of course uh, uh, generally for all during all pregnancies and here here on the slide yeah uh, here the short algorithm uh, for make it easier for you uh, you can see there are three groups uh, the first group age over 40 I would say near 40 uh, over 43 uh, uh, when we diagnose it very low ovarian reserve uh, sometimes we have also absence of the period so in this case uh, please don't waste your time uh, and we really consider to proceed directly with the egg donation so the second group um, is uh, age uh, also over 40 uh, but say, let's say below 43 uh, with a normal hormonal level with a regular period and um, here in this uh, case, of course, we can try uh, IVF with own eggs, um, but again, if the player fails two or more time, so then uh, again, don't lose your time and uh, proceed with the egg donation. And the last group uh, is age, uh, uh, age uh, under 40. And uh, here, of course, we see uh, should try uh, with IVF his own X. So uh, here I'm for you um, uh, this chart uh, where we can uh, compare the successful rate of a donor program uh, versus a non-donor program. And as you can see, uh, when the non-donor successful rate decreases with the age. Here you can see uh, the donor, the donor uh, program uh, works uh, really good. So uh, as you can see, the age doesn't influence the donor program. If we have really good embryo quality, uh, then um, it will uh, definitely work in the same way in 42 or 47 years old. So uh, the next uh, the next chart uh, here we can compare uh, I would compare first group uh, IVF the own uh, X uh, in this uh, the first group they are only less than 35 years old uh, with the last group uh, when we use the donor X and the average age was around 42 years old. And as you can see, the success rate is almost the same. So it's again about the uh, success rate of donor eggs in different age group. And, uh, and uh, let's move for, uh, for the second slide. And uh, here I prepared for you a few cases. Um, but uh, the cases that we had in our clinic and uh, it's not what we discussed before so let's take a look here uh, we have patient uh, 42 years old with good uh, family and personal history she gets just uh, surgery uh, appendectomy in 60 years old and diagnostic laparoscopy two years uh, ago with no pathology was found there uh, she she has regular uh, period uh, uh, she had one spontaneous birth and she had healthy boy seven years old after natural conception and the couple um, underwent before not in our clinic two IVF cycles uh, the first one uh, they get just three mature eggs um, uh, two of them were fertilized, uh, but day three they stopped uh, the developing and there was no embryos for the transfer. And uh, in the second uh, second IVF, they they get two mature egg and one uh, immature, and just one was fertilized and they get one embryo, uh, eight cell day number three. And this embryo indicating for the transfer with no uh, pregnancy. 
the last uh, uh, laboratory result aim which is 0 0.6 nanogram milliliter and FSH is 14. So it shows us that uh, it's a bit a little bit below the normal range, but for this age it's uh, uh, it's quite common situation. Uh, with uh, ultrasound, uh, we found just three anthropological count. All, all other tests was okay. Uh, the partner is 45 years old, uh, uh, healthy with normal spermiogram. As a conclusion, uh, is that secondary infertility, SH factor, and of course, egg donation uh, was indicated. And um, the result, mm -hmm. after selecting the donor, we, we get nine oocytes from the donor, eight was mature, six fertilized. Uh, we get four embryos, they five with good quality. Uh, two of them uh, were indicated for the transfer, and two of them uh, were frozen. Here, the recipient medication, this is standard uh, medication uh, uh, with a donor program of estrofram, or trivestan, anaprene, prednisone. Uh, and then, pregnancy test was done two weeks uh, later, uh, the positive result, and in 38 weeks, healthy boy was born via C-section. So this is the first case and I will show you now the second case and then we will compare these uh, two cases. Uh, the second is the patient uh, 31 years old with uh, good family and personal history. Uh, the patient had surgery laparoscopy due to endometrioma and right ovarectomy and resection of the left ovary, 28 years old. So she has a regular period and uh, she had never been pregnant. Uh, they're trying to conceive during uh, three years. They've been trying to conceive. So the last uh, laboratory test uh, is AMH 0 0.5 nanogram on milliliter and FSH 12. So it's almost uh, the same situation uh, with the first case. Um, we have also just three anthropolytal uh, performed the ultrasound. Uh, the differences uh, between two um, patient two cases is the age. In first case, uh, we have 42 years old. This patient is 31. And the low ovarian result here is due to surgery. So uh, all other tests was okay. Uh, the partner is 33 years old, healthy with normal spermiogram. As a conclusion, this is a primary infertility, endometriosis, low ovarian result. So um, here the couple underwent an hour clinic one eye react cycle. Uh, the standard short stimulation protocol with gonadotropin and gastritrophy, and uh, we get just two mature uh, eggs. Two of them were fertilized, and uh, at the end we have one good blastocyst, uh, really the the best uh, um, quality for AA, and uh, for indicated transfer. Medication uh, was just ultradistan and vitamins. And the pregnancy test was done two weeks later with a positive result. And in the 39 weeks, a healthy girl was born naturally. So these cases can um, show us how is important uh, the egg quality. In uh, both cases, uh, we get two or three uh, mature eggs. But in the first, um, in the first uh, cases, of course, the uh, egg quality, uh, I suppose, was not so good. So that's why uh, we can't achieve the healthy pregnancy, and we have to uh, move to donor program. Uh, in uh, this uh, situation, uh, even if we have low ovarian reserve, uh, the age 
really play uh, main roles. And uh, as you can see, uh, Giles with a Giles with a one good blood tissue he achieves a healthy pregnancy. And uh, here are the last cases. Uh, it's a different cases. This is a patient 35 years old. Uh, with good family and personal history, no surgery, uh, regular periods, no pregnancy, couple trying to conceive for uh, almost one and a half. And uh, the last laboral test uh, and the image, we get 0 0.03 nanograms in milliliter. It's a really, really low range and FSH 12. And ultrasound uh, we've done uh, during the the, uh, during the, the day number 12 or 14 of the cycle, and uh, we found the dominant follicle, uh, good endometrium um, lining, and uh, from other uh, uh, ovary, just three small follicles. All other tests uh, was okay. Uh, partner is 35 years old, healthy with normal spermiogram. As a conclusion, is a primary infertility and premature ovarian failure. As you can remember, uh, in indication, uh, uh, was the, the second group of indication in this situation when we uh, can't explain uh, why it happened. And uh, we try, of course, because the, she, uh, the patient was uh, young, and uh, first we try IVF cycle uh, with high dosage of uh, gonadotropin, and no eggs were retrieved. Uh, then we try a oh. simulation protocol uh, using yeah. plomitans, um, Mimicure, and uh, no eggs were um, uh, retrieved. Uh, then. Uh, we also proceed with two natural uh, cycles, and uh, un unfortunately, no eggs uh, was found there. So um, then, of course, uh, in this case, uh, we tried several times with different uh, programs, and it doesn't work. And then uh, egg donation were indicated, uh, and we get 15 oocytes from the donor. 12 of them were mature. Uh, six embryo day number five uh, uh, we get and uh, we transfer uh, we proceed with a single embryo transfer and five embryos were chosen. Uh, the patient have standard uh, uh, medication and uh, in two weeks uh, I've done uh, the uh, pregnancy test and it was a positive and in 40 weeks healthy boy was naturally born. So as you can see uh, it's a different cases uh, but uh, always about the uh, ovarian reserve, uh, about the egg quality as uh, we already um, discussed. And uh, um, here uh, I have uh, the Few numbers for you. Uh, this number is from uh, uh, our clinic. Uh, uh, in 2016, uh, we had uh, 339 IVF cycle and 291 uh, egg donation cycle. So you can see it's almost half and half. And uh, the, our successful rate, we calculate the bad chemical pregnancy for one. Um, not for one type, for one transfer, and it's 62%. And IVF successful rate between different age groups is at 43%. So um, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for the attention. And uh, I think now we can uh, proceed with uh, the question. Yes, we can start with the questions. Uh, we have question number one from Rosa. Mm -hmm. uh, what is a high FSH? 
Uh, yes, Rosa. FSH is uh, is a polyto. And sorry, Dr. Maria, can you speak up and a little bit closer to the microphone? Yes, yes I will try. Um, okay. So, is it better now? Is it better? Yes, better. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, FSH level, FSH is a follicle stimulating hormone uh, that uh, it's a gonadal protein and it's a uh, uh, secret in pituitary gland um, of every woman and uh, this hormone helps us uh, to um, follicle growth and on uh, the normal range uh, in reproductive age uh, in uh, all women it's below 10 and uh, if FSH, when FSH starts to grow uh, it can be a sign of uh, some problem with ovarian reserve, if ovarian function is uh, uh, decreased. So it's, it's one of the, uh, it's one of the uh, diagnostic parameters. Okay, thank you. Question number two. Uh, what do you mean by reproductive history if they have previously given birth or regular menstruation cycle? Uh, both of that. Uh, if the reproductive, of course, you will get the information if the donor uh, have a child or children. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, about the personal gynecological history about the regular menstruation cycles uh, as well as the hormonal level and ultrasound checkups yeah thank you uh, question number three mm -hmm. uh, do you help single women um, unfortunately uh, in Czech Republic it's not a law and uh, uh, we have a, an agreement and this agreement uh, must be signed from both partners and i checked here also uh, rosa can uh, ask me can fsa change by the day of the test yes sure uh, the test uh, must be done day number two of three uh, uh, of the cycle yeah. at the beginning of the cycle Okay, question number four. Mm -hmm. I don't have periods anymore, uh, and my case will uh, my cycle be synchronized with the donor. Uh, yeah, uh, it's one of the indication as we already discussed uh, when uh, you have no period. So it's even uh, better if you don't need to synchronize. Um, your cycle with the donor cycle. We will just uh, choose the best timing for you when we plan to come, and uh, then we start to prepare uh, you at the same time with the donor. So, uh, question number five. Uh, I still have my period, but is uh, it is not as regular as it used to be so I do uh, so do I still have any chance uh, do I 45 years old I suppose yeah uh, so look um, uh, as I mentioned before uh, after 40 years old the chance are, uh, to get uh, uh, pregnant uh, with our own um, own eggs it's really low it's maximum 10 pressure but after 42 uh, it's really decreased drastically it's around uh, maybe two percent so in your case maybe uh, maybe I would suggest you uh, don't waste your time and proceed with the donor Okay, thank you. Uh, question number six. Okay, 
question number six. What are the advantage of the egg uh, recipient having the same blood group and basis factor with the egg donor? Yeah, uh, it's a good question uh, because there is no uh, advantage. It doesn't influence the successful rate. But uh, many patients choose the same uh, uh, blood uh, group and basis factor because uh, uh, in case uh, if they the sudden will need uh, you as a donor or uh, maybe to keep it anonymous. Uh, so this is the main reason why uh, we choose a donor with the same blood group. But again, it's not necessary. And if you if you don't mind about it, uh, yes, you can uh, select a donor with a different blood group as well. So next question, uh, would you recommend uh, for someone to go straight for egg donation and just keep trying with own egg? In my case, I have reduced response uh, 0 0.55 nanogram or milligram AMH and uh, you are 40. Uh, no, as I showed you before, maybe then you can check the algorithm. In some cases, uh, of course, uh, uh, you should directly proceed uh, with the um, uh, egg donation program. Uh, but um, in some cases, for example, if you are 14, the AMH level is normal for your age. Uh, of course, we know that the uh, good range of it's one up to seven, but uh, uh, I repeat, uh, after 40, uh, we, we can't expect uh, the AMH uh, more than uh, 1, 1.5. So that's why in your case, maybe you can try uh, with uh, the own X, maybe a few times, but you have to understand and remember, unfortunately, the successful rate is not so high. So try of course but then uh, don't lose many time uh, on it and you understand that uh, using different methods uh, it doesn't bring you to the pregnancy then of course uh, we have studied also the donor program yeah question number eight yeah how do I ensure my body does not uh, reject an egg that is on is not mine? Uh, yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, usually, as I mentioned before, uh, about the immunological uh, factors, that is always uh, the last time it's very uh, controversial. Uh, usually, uh, for all uh, recipients, uh, we give the small dosage of prednisone uh, to put down a little bit your uh, immunological response. Uh, uh, but usually, as we have really great successful rate, I think uh, it uh, not happens so often. I think it's the same. Uh, uh, when you have uh, your um, own egg, uh, the embryo from your own egg, and the embryo from the donated egg. Uh, as you can understand your own egg, the half part of your own embryo uh, is uh, uh, also your partner. So the nature uh, is um, really thinking before <laughs> of all this uh, stuff. Yeah. Question number nine. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, can donor eggs be uh, used with firm sperm quality of the partner? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, of course, uh, we can. We can uh, use the donor egg, uh, but we have to understand that, uh, uh, as uh, uh, I mentioned before, the good embryo quality comes from good egg and good sperm quality. Uh, 
Uh, but uh, yes, we have really good. Um, we have um, uh, many uh, possibilities to select really good sperm, maturing sperm. Uh, uh, and um, uh, like a pixie, impsy, uh, max, uh, but in chaos uh, it will fail. Or uh, we can also try uh, maybe uh, PGS screening. And uh, if you will have no good uh, uh, poly, uh, good embryo, uh, then we can uh, start thinking about also the sperm donor. Question number 10. Yeah. Uh, how many days would I have to stay in Prague? Uh, can it be done in one visit uh, from Adele? Yes, Adele, uh, usually, uh, first of all, you will contact uh, our coordinator, uh, then uh, we will organize for you the Skype consultation with the doctor. Uh, we will discuss about uh, uh, all, um, all your results, what you already get, your previous treatments, and then um, we will plan uh, when you come directly uh, for for the IVF for the or donor program. And you asked me how how long time? Yes, yeah? right? Yes. Yes. Uh, it depends. For X uh, X program, uh, usually uh, if you plan to travel together with your partner, so. Uh, it's around one week, and uh, if you uh, have no time, uh, then your partner can time, uh, come anytime in our, our clinic uh, to give sperm sample, and then you will come just for a few days uh, for embryo transfer. Perfect. Question number 11. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, what are the advantage, uh, disadvantage of positive egg versus fake egg transfer from donor? Carol. So, Carol, um, in our clinic, uh, we are working just with the fresh egg. So, uh, we have great experience with the fresh, uh, fresh egg, and uh, that's why we decided to continue with this line. Okay, question 12. Right, uh -huh. Is it fresh cycle from the donor or are the donor eggs frozen? Yes, as I, as I uh, answered for the previous uh, question, uh, we just, just we work just with um, fresh, uh, uh, fresh eggs. Okay. Thirteen. Yeah. Uh, how can uh, a man uh, greatly improve the quality of his sperm if it is one percent uh, good only and has two months to do IVF with the donor egg? How, Erica? Uh, it's uh, I think more a uh, question for uh, for uh, andrologist. Uh, it depends uh, the reason of uh, the better sperm quality if uh, it's some idiopathic reason or is because of some uh, previous treatments or uh, uh, it's due to some hormonal reason. Uh, so and then uh, usually uh, the andrologist claim the uh, treatment for three up to six months to, the, to your partner and again it depends uh, of the reason uh, what bring us to this uh, not uh, good term quality. Yeah, next. Question 14. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to try uh, and trans transfer one's own egg and at the same time transfer donor egg and implant them together? What are the advantage disadvantage? 
So, Carol, um, I don't know if, if it's a really good idea. Theoretically, of course, it's possible, uh, but um, uh, I think um, better to understand uh, what we are going to transfer. So, in case um, uh, with a donor, when we use a donor egg, uh we expect uh, we, we we are not um usually we are not proceed with the pgs screening uh but uh, in case with uh, your own act if, if the age is over 40 uh so then we have to understand what we will uh transfer also because uh, to prevent the miscarriage and uh, other complication uh that's why I would maybe first uh, transfer and try your um, embryos that you get from your own egg. And then, in case it doesn't work, the next cycle uh, uh, you will transfer the don uh, um, embryos from donor egg. And I think you will have more chances. Uh, Dr. Maria, could we have a short explanation of the answer to question 11 again, please? Uh, yeah. That was about the advantages and disadvantages of frozen and fresh egg transfer. Yes, because uh, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we are, we are in our clinic, uh, we work just with the fresh egg from the donor. So that's why um, uh, from my experience, um, mm, uh, of course, uh, in our clinic, uh, in different cases, uh, we provide uh, uh, the services for the patient, for the single patient, or the patient before some uh, treatment like uh, chemotherapy or something like this. Uh, we uh, uh, freeze them eggs. Uh, but uh, uh, as I always uh, mentioned uh, and I always explain to the patient that uh, in case if you have the, your partner, uh, better uh, to freeze the embryos, not eggs. Uh, we have more experience with that. Uh, it works better. So that's why uh, in our clinic, uh, I think we are, we, are, we are not working with the, uh, with the frozen uh, egg, so that's why uh, I have just advantage using the fresh egg. Thank you. Question 15. Uh, can we use different RH factor uh, donor eggs? Hypothetical situation, I am RH positive and possible X donor is RH negative. Uh, uh, yes, I think you have already this um, question. Uh, of course, it's possible. It uh, doesn't influence uh, uh, your... Um, uh, it doesn't influence the IVS successfully. But with the RH factor, I maybe I, I would... Uh, prefer, uh, I will, I will uh, suggest you to uh, use uh, RH positive uh, as well, uh, RH positive donor. It's not for the IVF successful rate, it's for your pregnancy then. Because we have really a pathological situation with the rest of conflict. So that's why um, yes, better to use same RH factor, but uh, it's not uh, important with, uh, so important with the um, blood group. Mm -hmm. Can FSH change by the day of the test, if day two or three, and change each month? Uh, of course, uh, it can, uh, FSH as a AMH can change. Uh, uh, but uh, the change uh, will not so uh, huge. Uh, for example, if uh, in the first, uh, of course, you have to taste the day two or three of your cycle. And uh, 
if, uh, for example, one month you have uh, FSH 12, let's say, and the second month uh, 14, and the next month 10 or 11. So uh, it's always like uh, the same range. You know, it's the same with AMH. You can have 0 0.3 nanograms at 0 0.5. It's not so huge changes. So, um, it will show us uh, the uh, situation, uh, and I, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, uh, important is uh, combination of the diagnostic parameters, not just single FSH or single AMH. Uh, we have to consider all uh, parameters: FSH, AMH, antral follicle count, age. So. Uh, question: uh, Why uh, seventeen? Have, yeah. Uh, why don't have a period from the age nineteen, and the uterus is not developed? Can I have IVF? Uh, question from Maria. Oh, uh, yes. It's uh, it can be the different uh, situations. Uh, now it's really difficult to answer. Uh, why? Uh, I need your functional level, I need your um, uh, ultrasound results. Um, yes, uh, and uh, after uh, we can uh, discuss uh, about the possibilities. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's not too much information. <laughs> it's for okay. Maria, so Maria can send maybe to. Uh, email to Dorothy with all uh, medical information and then maybe we can answer better for this question. Yes, of course. If you have some test results and you want to pass it uh, them to us, you can email yeah. me and we will answer your questions. Question 18. Uh, so, uh, I also have FSH 99. Is it okay or borderline? And rosomyphysis came back 11. Is that a bad reading? So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we can't uh, consider just FSH. Uh, it's important uh, combination of uh, other parameters. Yeah, 9.9, 9, 11. It's still, uh, it's still like it show us maybe a sign of some viral, uh, some viral. Like poor uh, reserve or something like this, but uh, to answer really for this question, uh, we we need to consider also AMH level and antral follicle count. Question nineteen: uh, What about using a fresh egg and frozen sperm? Is it better to have both fresh samples? Does the sperm quality decrease when the frozen over time? Uh, so, in case uh, if the, we have normal uh, spermiogram range, uh, so of course it uh, doesn't uh, decrease uh, the quality of sperm also with the time. And sometimes um, our patient, uh, if they have no time uh, to spend one week uh, in Czech Republic, then uh, Partner came for one day, uh, leave the sperm sample, uh, we can froze it, uh, we will freeze it, and then, um, and then we proceed with the fresh uh, donor cycle. My FSH is 67, and my age was 32. Mm. Uh, been declared as infertile woman, but they don't know the case why I don't have the period cycle from that age, 19 years old, at that time. Uh, we, uh, you advise. Oh, um, FSH 69 is really, it's really high. Uh, uh, this number usually we have uh, in. Uh, Menopause of the woman starting uh, with the menopause. So uh, we also, I also don't know the case why uh, it's happened. 
maybe some uh, genetic uh, predisposition, maybe some some congenital um, uh, stuff. So the actual situation uh, uh, that FSH is really high. Uh, you have no period, and of course, in your situation, I think uh, you have proceed with the donor. Question 21. Out of curiosity, would you consider area for a 20 years old which AMH 0.2 and FSH is 19? I've been declined in UK because of the test results. Oh, it's, uh, uh, it's also difficult because um, uh, FSH uh, is really high and AMH is really low, but you are young. Uh, it's also important if you have uh, regular periods, if you are uh, ovulating, uh, then maybe in your case we can try some natural cycle or uh, uh, yes, uh, or maybe uh, some test stimulation. But the uh, FSH is really high, uh, so maybe uh, you can try once, but. Um, Maybe not IVF, but the natural cycle. Then, in case it doesn't work, of course, uh, you have to proceed with the epidemic program. Question 22. Mm -hmm. uh, what about using the, a fresh egg and frozen sperm? Is it better to have both fresh samples? I, uh, the sperm it's, I think uh, I already answered, but um, the better have both fresh samples um uh, uh, in uh, our experience uh the better have fresh eggs and uh, doesn't matter if you have fresh uh, sperm sample or frozen sperm sample just in case when the sperm range are not good in this case uh, of course we consider also the fresh uh, sperm material yeah the next Question 23. Yeah. Uh, what happens if the receiver woman in the net room is not ready on the transfer day with the fresh eggs? Uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, proceed with the embryo uh, freezing and we can prepare your endometrium in the next cycle. Uh, but usually we are uh, we are controlling you. Um, you you get from us the hormonal uh, therapy. Uh, then we recommend you the number ten of your preparation proceed with ultrasound control. And according to this data, uh, we can change the medication. And we can prepare you uh, better for the transfer. But again. If it's uh, happened the situation that your endometrium is not ready for different reasons, then we can freeze all uh, all embryos and uh, make the transfer cycle. Mm -hmm. Question twenty four. Yeah. Uh, in my case, there is no period and the uterus is not uh, developed. Can I receive medication to help develop it to make sure that the pregnancy will not be lost? Or what are the procedures? Uh, usually, uh, it, it also depends. Of course, we have uh, uh, you have try uh, first of all uh, maybe before uh, you came uh, for the uh, donor program, uh, you can try. Uh, with some hormonal uh, treatment, just to understand if uh, uh, your endometrium is uh, reacting for the treatment. Uh, this is important. Then, uh, if it will uh, reacting, that we will have uh, endometrium treatment, and we need minimum seven millimeter. Uh, then we can plan uh, the the uh, transfer. But uh, if it uh, not happen and your uterus will not answer, so then 
we have to consider other other Hello, Dr. Maria, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? No, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, Are you ready okay. for question? Yes, okay, 25. Yeah. Uh, my age is uh, six, uh, or 36, sorry. Um, FSA is 12.4, AMA is 1.6. Had one IVF cycle with maximum uh, dosage of 150 menopure. Um, they had three follicles. My entire follicle count is low. My clinic suggests egg donation, egg donor, has the sperm count and motility is good. Uh, what do you think? Uh, uh, you had just three follicles and uh, uh, how many eggs? Mature egg uh, you get. Also important information and how uh, this egg was fertilized and if you have the embryo transfer or not, uh, it's uh, important information. But the, um, the results are not so bad, and the age is you know, still 36. So maybe I would uh, try maybe uh, soft stimulation protocol. In your case, uh, different uh, protocols may sometimes. Uh, uh, can work for so long protocol. Um, yes, but I would definitely try maybe one more time with uh, IVF with own egg. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any chances that in future, if you give the beers with a donor egg, that you would be feeling that this wasn't my egg? Uh, so it's like philosophical. Um, a question. Uh, from my experience, uh, we have uh, couples that uh, back to our clinic for the second child. Uh, from uh, and the first one is from the donor egg. And you know, I think uh, when women feel uh, start feel uh, pregnant, I mean uh, all signs of pregnancy. Uh, first heart, uh, heart uh, bites of your uh, child, then you will give um, the birth of this child, then uh, uh, breastfeeding, all these uh, um, things, uh, I don't know if then you can start seeing that it's not yours. So it's really personal, uh, but uh, from my experience, I never felt about it. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Maria, so the next question is from R.H. Price. What are the percentages of successful implantation? And full term pregnancy for a couple of 42 years of age using, uh, using N. And, they <laughs> and egg donor and husband sperm. And egg donor uh, and uh, egg donor and husband sperm. Okay. Uh, so uh, as um, I mentioned, uh, the in a donor um, in donor program, uh, the age is really not so important. Uh, we have the same result a woman age. 40, 47, uh, the implantation rate is also depends on successful success uh, of IVF. The most, uh, the, the main uh, part is the embryo quality. So that's why when we use uh, the donor egg and in case your husband has good sperm quality, uh, then we can uh, expect a good uh, embryo and the good uh, implantation rate, of course. Uh, yes. yeah. Do you have donor of black origin? Oh, um, I am not sure. Um, I think we have the uh, Chinese uh, donor, uh, but uh, this question maybe I will uh, uh, 
need to ask our coordinators, but I'm not sure. Okay, we are waiting for more questions. Yeah. Do you have donors of Indian origin? Uh, Question 28. Um, I, I, it's the same, uh, I think, like if there's a black origin, Indian origin, uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, that's why I put on my presentation one of the points to consider is the phenotype, of course. And as you can uh, imagine, in, uh, uh, in Czech Republic, of course, we have some exception, like a Chinese, uh, some, something like this, but uh, the characteristics are more reflect the uh, Central or Eastern European uh, look. Question 28. Yeah. Image 0 0.2 plus is nitrate. I don't have a natural period, only stimulated by estrogen and progesterone. Would you still recommend something apart donor egg? Uh, H to E. No, in this case, maybe, um, maybe donor egg to the solution. The unique solution. Any more questions? Somebody is typing a question. We will wait a moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have question 29 from Joy. Uh, yeah. Uh, I tried IVF on a short protocol, but I uh, did not finish the treatment because I was reacting to the medication and only had one egg developing properly. So do you think um, you have chances with the donor egg? Uh, yes, uh, why not? Uh, of course, uh, with the donor egg, uh, uh, it's not uh, important. Uh, which answer you have on uh, uh, the IVF treatment with own egg. Yes, Question thirty. Yeah. yeah. Thirty. How long do you uh, recommend to wait to travel after implantation? Oh, usually uh, we have patients that travel uh, directly after. Uh, you, you you mentioned uh, not implantation, but maybe transfer. So. Uh, they back home uh, sometimes it's the same day because we have a lot of patients from Germany and of course the Czech Republic, for example. Or um, uh, you can travel day after. Uh, it really uh, doesn't influence um, the result. Mm. Question 31. Yeah, can a patient select donor from? Photographs? No, uh, no, because it's um, anonymous, and uh, if we will show the photo, uh, not so anonymous. So that's why we will uh, provide you a really uh, maximum information that we can. Uh, or we also ask the donor uh, really about the hobby about the education, about the job, about everything, all characteristics, weight, height, color of the skin, of the type of the skin, everything, but uh, uh, photo on it. Yeah, just information. We have question 32 from my Maria. How do you select egg donors? I think that's the question. Uh, how we select egg donor? Uh, so, uh, as um, I said before in the presentation, the old donor are, are young. Uh, the age is between 18 to 32 years old in our clinic. Uh, they're healthy, of course, with uh, no. Uh, different disease in the personal and the family history. They all tested with the STD, with hormonal level, gynecological control, uh, genetic uh, test, uh, everything. So, 
And uh, if you mention, if you mean you are select a donor for the recipient, so then uh, the first of all recipients um, uh, apply, uh, fill the form, and put there all the wishes, all uh, uh, phenotype characteristics, and um, according to this uh, information, uh, we select the donors and match uh, best your profile. And uh, then we contact this donor, explain the timing, start the process. Question 33. Yeah. Can we see the sex of the baby? Can we go for this, for example? So, uh, gender selection in Czech Republic is prohibited. And uh, yes, uh, we can do a single embryo transfer or we can uh, transfer two embryos. Question 34. Yeah. How long does it uh, typically take to make the donor and the recipient? Now, uh, usually uh, from, uh, we have a good uh, donor database. So, Usually you contact our um, coordinator, and then you have a Skype consultation with the doctor. If, if everything is okay, uh, the coordinator will send you uh, two or three uh, donors, like A, B, C, D. Uh, you, you have to choose one of them, and then um, you will contact this donor, and uh, you will tell us your wishes about the timing, then you explain at the travel, and uh, we start the process. So let's say one month, maybe, from the first contact uh, to our clinic. Question 35. Yeah. How many uh, times can a donor donate eggs, and how many eggs will you receive from their cycle? Uh, to fertilize. Oh, sorry, Maria. This is 36. My mistake. Uh, the question above that: How many eggs are guaranteed from the egg donor? Yeah. Sorry about uh, that. From the, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Uh, we guarantee uh, six uh, mature eggs. And then next question is: How many uh, times can a donor donate eggs? And how many eggs uh, will you receive from the cycle fertilized? So, uh, every donor, uh, your donor is just for you. So, it means all eggs that we will have from this donor, all eggs is your. If you have 12, 15, 10, all is your. But minimum that we promise is six uh, mature eggs. And uh, how many times can donor donate? Uh, in Czech Republic, five, maximum six, and in our clinic, five times. 37, yes, yeah, right? That's yes, awesome. right. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the uh, waiting time to find the donor? Uh, there is not so waiting time. Yeah, it's more, it's, of, co of course, if you have no really some special request, uh, usually, as I mentioned, we have really uh, uh, good, uh, a big, database of the donor so that's why um, it's really it's really fast so it means first contact with the uh, coordinator second uh, appointment uh, for Skype consultation and then the donor selection it's really can take I don't know two weeks question 38 uh, can you select a donor who already has had kids before? Of course, uh, it's all according to your wish. We will provide you this information. And uh, yes, you can do that. 39. Question uh, 39. Yeah. Uh, what happens to any frozen embryos if we get and uh, stay pregnant? So all, uh, all embryos is yours. So, uh, in, the, um, in the first uh, program, uh, we will keep them uh, one year, and then every year uh, you will decide uh, what we have to do. 
if you, if you have to keep them in our clinic and then maybe you will plan to when you will plan the second uh, baby uh, back uh, for the frozen embryo transfer or uh, if you don't need it anymore so you, you need to just to sell it okay i think these are all the questions we've had um we don't have any more if you have any additional questions you can email them to me um dr maria um would you like to add anything um, uh, um yes um yeah. i hope i answer for all questions and uh, if you have any additional question like uh, Dorothy um, uh, told you, please uh, send the email with uh, all uh, uh, information about uh, your old test and then maybe I can answer better. And, uh, uh, to the conclusion, uh, I would uh, say that uh, from my side, I'm really happy uh, that we have this additional solution uh, as a donor um, a donor program and uh, results are really great and uh, it makes me really happy that we we can help uh, the couple difficult situation come that's it okay. thank you very much for the attention Thank you, Dr. Maria. Uh, we have one more question uh, from RH Price, but uh, I think uh, we will answer it uh, by email after the webinar uh, okay. because we need to clarify something. Uh, okay. Um, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to all the viewers and patients uh, who are here with us tonight. Um, thank you, Dr. Maria, um, and have a good night. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.